discrepancy in vote tally records was also the subject of averments by Mr. Benson Wasonga, who deponed that the IEBC summation of valid votes was 15,000, sorry, 15,179,717, with the first petitioner having 6,000,000, 821,505, the third respondent having 8,222,862, and the total rejected votes being 477,195, as compared to the IBC portal showing as total votes cast 15,181,381, first petitioner's vote as 6,821,877, that respondents vote as 8,223,163 and rejected votes as 403,495. These figures, it was deponed, varied from the specific figures in Form 34C that were issued at the time of declaration of the third respondent as the leading candidate. Total valid votes as 15,114,622. First petitioner's votes as 6,762,224. Third respondent's votes as 8,203,290. Total rejected votes as 81,685. The deponent deposed that the actual variation in the rejected votes as between the IABC summation of the results and the display on the portal was 73,000. 700 votes, and he averred that this differential amounted to violation of the electoral law to the prejudice of the presidential candidates other than the declared winner. The petitioners called two more witnesses, one of these being Mr. Mohamed Noor Bare from Mandera, and the other one being Mr. Ibrahim Mahmoud Ibrahim, who said that they had been excluded from the polling stations. We have to look at the respondent side. Judicialism, the established framework for relieving the all so frequent grievances, conflicts, frays, and tensions in the social order has evolved a civilized tradition of durable rules and methods of accommodation. Such methods have their objectivity and rationale lodged within the discipline of law which, as, I will be, as will become evident in this judgment, is the domain not of the most open textured manifestations, not the most elementary political situations, but of jurisprudence as, method, as, as methodical reasoning of a normative and professional category. The established judicial method, which rests on the singular dependability of the fact base and which vindicates the principles of fairness, objectivity, and legitimacy is to entertain the account from the other side, and therefore to weigh, check, and balance the true streams of evidence, thereby arriving at a valid and just result. As I express this introduction perception, so as to shed more light on the instant matter, I admit my debt to legal scholarship with Andrew Goodman in his learned work, How Judges Decide Cases, in which he observes, quote, however rarefied and abstruse the legal argument before the court, it must be anchored on the facts of the case. While the judges will feel free to expound upon the most general principles in order to provide guidance for the future, the actual decision will turn on the facts, even if the detail of the argument is quite remote from them." End of quote. Such is a fundamental principle invariably observed in the practice and application of law in this country as in other countries, the constitutional 
and judicial systems of which have benefited from the integrity of the common law tradition. And such an approach is certain to lead to a fair, dependable, and plausible basis of judgment, as well as set a just and tenable reference point for the future. Let's look at the issues and contentions coming from the respondent side. It was the first and second respondent's assertion that the third respondent in the presidential election of the 8th of August 2017 had garnered the largest number of votes and had satisfied the constitutional threshold prescribed in Article 134.38.4 of the Constitution, apart from complying with the terms of the applicable statute law. They denied the petitioner's claims of non-compliance with the terms of Article 1, 2, 4, 10, 38, 81, 82, 86, 88, 138, 140, 163, and 249 of the Constitution, as well as other applicable laws, asserting that all such claims of non-compliance were couched in bare generalities and were devoid of any factual basis. The first and second response stated that the conduct of the presidential election had been attended with an elaborate management system guided by all relevant electoral laws and safeguarded by definite safety measures for assuring transparency, accountability, verifiability in terms of Articles 81 and 86 of the Constitution. The first and second response stated that they had duly verified and accurately tallied the election results for all candidates before declaring the outcome in accordance with Article 138.10 of the Constitution and duly taking into account the terms of the recent Court of Appeal decision in IEBC against Maina Kiai, Civil Appeal Number 105 of 2017. They denied the petitioner's claims that they had conducted the electoral process in a manner that prejudiced the sovereign will of the voters and that they had only delivered, quote, preconceived and predetermined computer-generated leaders, end of quote. The first and second respondents denied the petitioner's allegation that the number of rejected votes in the presidential election had been as much as 2.6 percent, and the total votes cast stating that such votes, as declared in Form 34C, constituted only 0.54 percent of the votes cast. The first and second respondents contested the petitioner's claim that the right principle to guide this court in respect of the treatment of rejected votes should be that, that preferred by the Seychelles Supreme Court in popular democratic movement against electoral commission. The respondent's stand was that rejected votes had been rightly excluded from the count of votes cast by this court. The respondent stated that the process of relay and transmission of results from the polling station to the constituency tallying center and the national tallying center had been simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, transparent, and prompt. The first and second respondents stated that the presidential election had been conducted in a manner that was free fair and in accordance with the Constitution, a manner that gave fulfillment to the sovereign will of the voters. The respondents urged that in these proceedings, two basic questions fell for determination, namely, first, whether the third respondent was validly elected and declared as president-elect by the second respondent, and secondly, what consequential declarations, orders, and reliefs the court should grant. They asked the court to find, with regard to the two questions, that firstly, the respondents 
had not contravened the provisions of the Constitution, the Elections Act, or any other statute. Secondly, uh, the presidential election was conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the Elections Act and all other relevant statutes and a valid declaration of the outcome duly made. Thirdly, that the third respondent was validly elected as the President of the Republic of Kenya. Fourthly, that the people of Kenya <coughs> exercised their sovereign power of the vote and their decisions should be respected. Fifthly, that the petition lacks merit and should be dismissed. Sixthly, that the petitioners should bear the cost of the petition. We'll go through some of the evidential statements. The second respondent, in his affidavit sworn on the 24th of August 2017, deponed that he had been the returning officer for the presidential election on the 8th of August 2017. He averred that neither he nor the first respondent had any private stake in the election outcome, and they had been neutral referees, their sole mandate being to provide the electoral structure for the voters to exercise their sovereign will by electing leaders of their choice. The deponent averred that a tally of all the votes had shown Uhuru Kenyatta to have garnered 8,203,290 votes, followed by Raila Odinga, the, second, the first petitioner hearing, who garnered 6,762,224 votes. The declared results were expressed in Form 34C, which was itself abstracted from Forms 34B, forwarded to the National Telling Center from the constituency telling centers, as well as the diaspora vote tallies. The deponent averred that in view of the election management infrastructure that was in place, the primary resource declaration forms, forms 34A and 34B, were by no means compromised in their accuracy and overall integrity. These forms had been transmitted through the KIMS electronic system in a scanned format secured by non-replicable features. The security features, he averred, included anti-photocopy and self-carbonated elements up to a span subsuming six copies. He deposed that the presiding officers at the 40,000 883 polling stations were required to scan and electronically transmit the original Forms 34A to both the constituency telling centers and the national telling center. The constituency telling centers, for their part, were required to relay the Form 34B to the national telling center for the purpose of tallying, and so, for the presidential election, the results could be verified by reconciling the figures in Forms 34A. The deponent averred that his dedicated task in the said electoral process was to provide policy leadership and strategic direction to ensure that the Commission's infrastructure for election management was accountable, efficient, systematic, methodical. He deposed that though afflicted by challenges occasioned by a multiplicity of suits against the Commission, it still ensured that the procurement of electoral materials by the Secretariat was done in a transparent and timely manner, and that other electoral processes, including supportive technological <coughs> systems, were deployed in a manner consistent with the constitutional and legal requirements of simplicity, accuracy, verifiability, security, transparency, accountability. The deponent averred that all due arrangements had been made by the Commission in aid of the electoral process of the 8th of August 2017, 
noting in particular the following aspects. One, voter education had been conducted throughout the country. Two, staff training for the management of elections had been duly carried out. Three, all the polling stations had been duly gazetted. Four, the register of voters had been duly audited and uploaded in the Commission's website and hard copies printed and posted at conspicuous sites at each polling station. Five, mechanisms were put in place to facilitate the observation, monitoring, and evaluation of elections in compliance with the terms of Article 88.4 of the Constitution. Six, the procurement and distribution of strategic and non-strategic election materials was duly completed. Seven, as required by Article 10 of the Constitution, the Commission had held many consultative meetings with key stakeholders, including quite significantly political parties, to update them on the progress made on all fronts in relation to the 8th of August 2017 elections. And eighth, the Commission had duly complied with the recent decision of the Court of Appeal in the Mainakiai case on the conditions attending the tasks of vote counting, tallying, verification, and declaration of presidential election results at the constituency level and at the National Tallying Center. The deponent averred, in the light of the foregoing safeguard measures taken, that it was not true, as alleged by the petitioners and their witnesses, that the Commission presided over a shambolic presidential election, or that the entire electoral process was a failure, or that the election entailed breaches of the Constitution and the applicable laws relating to vote tallying and to the transmission of results. The deponent averred that the presidential election had met all the requirements of free and fair elections, having been conducted by way of secret ballot, being free from violence, improper influence or corruption, having been administered in a dedicated process conducted exclusively by the Commission, having been transparently conducted, and having been administered in an impartial, neutral, efficient, accurate, and accountable manner. The deponent on the course of action which he took following the elections signaled his authority as emanating from Article 138.10 of the Constitution. He is mandated within seven days following the election to declare the result as set out in Form 34C and to deliver written notice of the same to both the Chief Justice and to the incumbent president. He averred that throughout the electoral cycle, he had discharged his mandate in perfect accord with the Constitution, the electoral laws, and the applicable regulations. He averred that in the discharge of his obligations at election time, he had not been influenced by anyone and had maintained the required standards of professionalism. The deponent deposed that he had conducted and supervised the election in accordance with the terms of Article 81E of the Constitution, and that in this respect, several elements in his discharge of duty stand out, namely, one, every registered voter who participated in the general election had cast his or her vote by way of secret ballot. Secondly, polling stations were adequately secured by police to ensure that the electoral process was free from violence, intimidation, improper influence or corruption. Three, the election was independently conducted by the commission. Four, candidates and observers were allowed to have their appointed agents at the various polling stations to observe the voting process and to assure transparency. Five, the said agents observed the closure of the voting process and were involved in the counting of votes at the various polling stations to bear witness to manifestations of transparency, impartiality, neutrality, 
efficiency, accuracy, and accountability in the voting and vote count, and six, the agents of the presidential election candidates were given access to the various vote recording forms, including <coughs> Form 34A and 34B, a further element in the first respondent's transparency and accountability. The deponent averred as regards the transmission set up during the electoral process. Now, the commission staff managing the KIMS gadgets had been trained in good time, and the said gadgets had been configured with the register of voters. He averred that the KIMS system was designed to allow for integration of the biometric voter registration, biometric voter identification, the electronic transmission of election results, and the political party and candidate registration systems. He deposed that the said system had been successfully deployed on the 8th of August 2017 and that it had significantly improved efficiency, effectiveness, and accuracy in the operation of the electoral process. The deponent averred that he was present at the National Tallying Center between the 8th and 11th of August 2017, participating in the tallying and validation of Form 34B that were being electronically transmitted by the constituency returning officers, and in this regard, he attached as evidence copies of Forms 34B marked WWC3. Upon receipt of these forms, he deposed, he had collected the same and confirmed the consistency of the results available Forms 34B to presidential election candidates through their agents for verification and confirmation. The department thereafter used the said results to tally and complete Form 34C in compliance with Section 393B of the Elections Act. The deponent makes specific averments on the vote tallies as he received them on the 11th of August 2017. Now that chart is set out there, you'll be able to see it. The deponent averred that the Commission had found that in a few of the resource declaration forms, there were certain errors, but that these errors were inadvertent, minor errors which had no effect on the vote tally and outcome of the presidential election. In support of the finding on the said errors, the deponent tendered in evidence a document marked WWC5, attended with a detailed affidavit of Madame Immaculate Kasait. Mr. Chibukati had specific affirmations to make in relation to certain depositions made on behalf of the petitioners. He deponed in relation to the statement by Mr. Godfrey Osotsi that throughout the electoral process, the Commission had engaged the petitioners as well as the third respondent in person and through their representatives, the public and interested stakeholders for the purpose of adhering to best practices in electoral matters. The deponent, in departure from the testimony of Mr. Godfrey Osotzi, averred that the Commission was already in possession of all Forms 34B at the time of declaration of the presidential election results, and all the Forms 34B and 34C were available to the candidates and the agents for verification before the declaration of results. And all presidential election candidates were allowed to visit the National Tallying Center to verify the results, as from the commencements up to the moment of declaration. He averred that he personally chaired many consultative meetings with the petitioner's agents <coughs> whenever any issues of concern had been raised, even though for an explained course the petitioner's agents had decided to depart from the National Tallying Center just prior to the declaration of results. In response to the first petitioner's claim of procedural flaws, illegalities, and irregularities in the collection, tallying, verification, and transmission of presidential election results, the deponent averred that tallying as conducted by the commission 
was in compliance with Articles 81E and 86 of the Constitution, as read with Section 39 of the Elections Act. And he deponed that at every forum of resource processing, the petitioners were allowed to have their agents to confirm the telling, the announcement, and declaration of results. He averred as well that the electronic system of transmission of results was secure, prompt, verifiable, and efficient. He deponed that all the results declaration forms had been subject to verification by the candidates' agents and their representatives, and immediately thereafter forwarded to the National Telling Center. The deponent further averred that the first petitioner had deposed that he had been given access to the Form 34B through his agents, and thus the charge of lack of transparency and accountability in the telling process was short on veracity. The deponent denied the first petitioner's assertion that IEBC had condoned voter intimidation, undue influence, bribery, and all flagrant electoral offenses committed by the third respondent. He similarly denied the assertion by one of the first petitioner's witnesses, Dr. Nyangasi Oduo, that the third respondent had been declared to be the winner without a verification of all the requisite documents. He averred that all the presidential election candidates and their agents or representatives had been invited to verify the results before declaration, and he deponed that he did not announce the final results of the presidential election until he had received and verified the Form 34B from the constituency telling centers. The deponent averred that on the 10th of August 2017, the Commission received a letter of the same date from Mr. Orengo, the petitioner's deputy chief agent, raising concerns about the presidential election results, and the Commission internally considered the issues raised before communicating his position by letter of the same date, Exhibit WWC 6A and 6B. He averred that the declaration of presidential election results on the 11th of August 2017 was done in full compliance with the terms of the Constitution, contrary to the averments of the second petitioner. The deponent averred that the petitioner's allegation that the Commission had failed to take steps against the third respondent for breach of the provisions of the Elections Offenses Act, Section 14, was not true. For on the 21st of June 2017, he had written to the Director of Public Prosecutions, informing him of the alleged breach, and called for his action. The Director of Public Prosecutions had responded by his letter of the 6th of July 2017, Exhibit WWC 7. Another affidavit was sworn by the first respondent, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Ezra Chiloba, who averred that the Commission had conducted the presidential election on the 8th of August 2017 in accordance with the terms of the Constitution, Articles 81, 83, 86, the Elections Act, and the applicable regulations. Mr. Chiloba testified that despite the complex political and legal environment in the run-up to the general election of the 8th of August 2017, the first respondent had managed to put in place an effective infrastructure. He averred that the election was conducted in a transparent, open, and accountable manner, and that the process was peaceful and credible, just as was confirmed by both local and international observers. In this regard, he annexed as evidence a copy of the various observer reports, Exhibit EC12. The deponent averred that the tallying and transmission of election results took place at the polling stations, where the vote count was collated and declared at the constituency tallying center and the national tallying center. Results thus processed and accounted for, <coughs> the deponent averred, were in every sense credible and truly represented the will 
of the voters. He deposed that there had been no compromise to nor interference with the system for the transmission of results before, during, or after the declaration of the outcome of the presidential election. He deposed that the collation, telling, and transmission of the results were in accordance <coughs> with the terms of the Constitution, the Elections Act, <clears throat> and the appellate court decision in the minor care case. <clears throat> Referring to the documentary evidence on record, the deponent deposed <clears throat> that the election results as declared were substantially consistent with and were a true reflection of the actual results tallied and declared at the duly gazetted polling stations. <clears throat> Responding to the assertions in the first petition of Safi David, the deponent averred that the electoral law had been recently updated with the enactment of the Election Laws Amendment Act 2017, allowing a four month period within which to procure and establish the HIMS system and that there was no basis for the allegation that this new electronic system had been compromised through the practice of hacking, occasioning a distortion in the presidential election vote tallies. He denied the first petitioner's assertion that the first respondent had failed to put in place the requisite measures to assure the credibility of the Kim system and averred that the said system had served well in the identification of voters and for results transmission. He further deponed that the Commission's operations were not entirely dependent on KIMS as a complementary mechanism was provided for by law in the event of any breakdown in the electronic system. The deponent denied the petitioner's assertion that the conduct of vote telling in the presidential election had not been in accordance with the terms of Article 86 of the Constitution. He deposed that the election results had been transmitted from polling stations and constituency telling centers as required by law, denying the petitioner's statement that they were not supplied with forms 34A and 34B. The deponent averred that the petitioners had indeed been supplied with all forms 34A and 34B available on the public portal, and that by their own letter of the 14th of August 2017, the petitions acknowledged being accorded access to all the requested forms. Now, this is given as Exhibit EC15. To the petitioner's assertions that forms 34A and 34B had certain anomalies, such as brought into question the credibility of the presidential election, the deponent averred that the petitioners had not disputed the results as declared, but only alleged unsubstantiated qualitative anomalies. The deponent averred that all presiding officers had been trained by the commission to take the image of Form 34A for transmission through KIMS though there were a number of instances in which they chose to take images of other documents. And the consequence, in view of the fact that one of the security features was the capturing of only one image for the six sets of elections, was that it was the, te it was the test documents rather than Forms 34A that ended up being transmitted. Upon, being, upon noting this error, the first respondent uploaded the form 34A for the affected polling stations on the public portal. Such inadvertent transmission of wrong images, the deponent averred, did not affect the election results as contained in forms 34A. He annexed a typical example of such error as EC18 exhibit. Responding to the petitioner's affidavit sworn by Ms. April Oichoe, the deponent averred that the assertions made under the rubric, quote, the travesty 
that was the electoral process in Kenya 2017, end of quote, did not give a true account. The report in question had not, in the first place, been dated or signed, nor was its author or source indicated. The deponent averred that, quite to the contrary, the first respondents' telling and transmission system were functional and credible in all respects. In response to the affidavit of Mr. Benson Wasonga, the deponent averred that the election results from each polling station were contained in Form 34A, and the results declaration for the presidential election was made on the basis of results contained in Forms 34B from 290 constituencies and the diaspora. He averred that the total number of rejected ballots as declared in Forms 34C was 81,685 and not 477,195 as alleged. He averred that Mr. Wasonga had misconstrued the statistics published on the public display mode of Kim's, which was not the result <coughs> within the terms of the law. He deponed that the cause of the various of the variance between the actual number of rejected ballots and the figure shown on the public website was but on account of human error. In response to the statements made on behalf of the petitioners by Mr. George Kegoro, the deponent firstly adopted the detailed tenor and effect of the first respondent's depositions by Ms. Immaculate Kasait. Secondly, the deponent averred that the statistics electronically displayed did not, as such, constitute the results of the presidential election. The final result of the presidential election is verifiable from an inspection of Forms 34A and 34B. <clears throat> the deponent denied Mr. Kegoro's statement that the IABC's portal showed varying levels of votes cast for the six different elective offices featuring in the general elections of the 8th of August 2017. He averred that Mr. Kegoro's statement <clears throat> was unrelated to the fundamentals of the petition, as it lacked a foundation in the pleadings and the primary depositions of the petitioners, hence verging upon an attempt to litigate a substantial presidential petition by the guise of supporting affidavit. <clears throat> Responding to the affidavit of Ms. Olga Karani for the petitioners, the deponent adopted the averments made by Ms. Immaculate Kasait and Mr. James Muhati and deposed that all agents at the National Tallying Center had been given access to Forms 34A and 34B and an opportunity to verify the results before declaration. The deponent averred that the presidential election of the 8th of August 2017 was conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the electoral laws, and that the process was free, fair, and credible. 